Okay, we are in transit-oriented development and how the strategic planning across Texas is unfolding. And we've got really the right people in the room to talk about it. We've got, I'm, I'm gonna let them do their own introductions, but just to say, we've got the Austin City Council uh, member representation. We've got a division manager and planning department at the city of Austin. And we've got a TOD uh, program manager from Houston Metro. So all really knowledgeable of TOD topics, so really exciting. Um, I thought real quick also maybe I would start just with a, a definition of TOD. I know all of you infrastructure professionals know exactly what that is, but I read the three sentences from Wikipedia, and I thought it was really good. You know what I mean? Like actually going back to the definition, and you guys can correct me where this is half-baked. <clears throat> but in urban planning... Transit-oriented development, or TOD as we'll probably refer to it as here, is a type of urban development that maximizes the amount of residential, business, and leisure space within walking distance of public transport. It promotes a symbiotic relationship between dense, compact, urban form and public transport use. In doing so, TOD aims to increase public transport ridership by reducing the use of private cars and promoting sustainable urban growth. So that's been a hot topic of many subjects today. I think it really ties all of it together nicely. Uh, I love the multimodal uh, focus. Uh, I'm a professional engineer from background. 20 years ago, I lived in Denver, and I was actually in a TOD development. And I sort of mentioned to my friends here that on our prep call that I felt really cool living there. You know what I mean? I felt young-ish. I felt, uh, it was 20 years ago, so I was younger. Um, but it was cool. It was hip. It was, um, you know, restaurants, bars, expensive apartments, this kind of thing. So I loved it, fell in love with it. I'm from the Southwest. We don't have a lot of transit where I come from, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado is where I spent a lot of my time. So that's my background of TOD, and that's about all I've really ever thought about it and just had that cool feeling about it. But we got some insights here just in preparing for the session that I, is, I know is going to bring some really interesting thoughts to you all because it did to me as well. Um, so without maybe much further ado and without ruining anybody's um, fun intros, why don't we go down the line here and we'll just do a little self-intro and kind of who you are, what the agency is you're with, um, and sort of what you do to the overall infrastructure ecosystem, where you plug in. I'm happy to kick it off. I am Paige Ellis. I am a two-term Austin City Council member. I chair our mobility committee, serve on housing and planning, and do a number of other board and commission volunteer work along Campo and Cap Metro. So I, I do a lot of work in the mobility, development, and clean air quality space here in Austin, Texas. And I was one of the co-sponsors authorizing our ETOD work uh, in partnership with Cap Metro and our Project Connect office when we decided to tackle this initiative many years ago. So we are very familiar here in the city of Austin at what ATOD is, but then when Cap Metro qualified for a federal grant to, to try an equity TOD and what would that look like, um, we said as a city council that this was a really important initiative for us and we wanted to have our staff really dive into this and see what they could make of it. Nice. Stevie? Good afternoon. I'm Stevie Greathouse. I'm a division manager here in the city of Austin for our planning department. I am one of the staff um, that Council Member Ellis refers to, although there are way more staff than just me working in this work. Um, I am a division manager um, in our department over a team that works on equitable transit-oriented development on behalf of the city and looking forward to diving into a conversation about what that means for this group today. Cool. And Taylor, thanks so much for jumping in. He was a late swap out, so it's one of those deals for him, right? Like, hey, get to Austin, and uh, you're on a panel. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks. Thank you. It seems like that's always how I get it. That's it, in. yeah. Um, so my name is Taylor Markenthal. I'm the TOD, or Transit Oriented Development Program Manager for Houston Metro. Um, I've been with Metro for about two years, um, and just coincidentally, when I started, Metro was relooking at its TOD program, and so I started in capital projects, and then we created a formal program for TOD about a year ago, and I switched over to that, so now I'm a full-time TOD manager. Um, my background is in urban planning. I have about 10 years' experience um, in transportation planning. I've worked with transit agencies and metropolitan planning organizations uh, across the Southeast, and I'm sort, sort of new to Texas. I moved here two years ago um, to Houston. Glad to be here. 
Um, and I'm just, you know, I've always been passionate about um, creating walkable, livable communities. So happy to be doing what I'm doing and where I'm doing it. Uh, we're doing a lot of exciting things in Houston and we have a lot of unique opportunities. Excellent. So I know you all have a lot of depth here, a lot of programs going on, a lot of thoughts about how you're trying to drive change with TOD. So I thought I'd just let everybody kind of have their three to five minutes here to kind of talk about what's top of mind for you all and how you plug in and what TOD means to you guys. But I just want to ask that we don't forget, like, what, does, what are we thinking when, when we think of TOD? What is the problem it's trying to solve for us as you talk about your overarching programs and that stuff? If we could just kind of get to that the kernel of what TOD does for us, you know what I mean? Are we still going in numerical? Yeah, why not? Okay. I, I'm an engineer, I'm like very linear, sorry. I don't wanna hog the microphone. Sometimes all the good talking points come out first and I don't wanna keep that from anybody. Um, so at the city of Austin, we've been immersed in a number of conversations over the past five or so years. Um, we are a city that had redlining, like many cities do, and we're trying to erase what that red line did to our town. You know, there, um, I, don't, I don't need to reiterate, you know, the history of land use planning to anyone in this room, but there's many communities that are still seeing divides in their community that are not just socioeconomic and racial divides, but, but they're about how people actually get across the city. How do they get from east to west or north to south? There's many cities that have terminology, like in San Antonio, it was like, the south side, and then here, you know, there, there's just all these different terminologies in cities about where are the more desirable parts of town and where are the less desirable. So as land use has, has moved forward in the past 100 years in the city of Austin, we have boldly faced these questions about how do we undo the wrongs of the past, and we've been fortunate in these years to get to have discussions about things like highway expansion, I-35, we have voter passed Project Connect, which is a program that has light rail, it has Metro Rapid Bus, it has transit enhancement projects, um, neighborhood circulators for our public transportation system. And so we are at this forefront of this conversation around, you know, I-35 was built specifically through the divide of Central Austin and East Austin where people of color lived. And we're trying to make sure that as we implement Project Connect, as we deal with a TxDOT highway expansion, that you know I-35 is always under construction. I'm born and raised Texan, I know it to be true. There's always going to be growing pains where you have good business centers and lots of job opportunities. But at the same time, how do we tackle this conversation around building light rail, having connected communities that are walkable and bikeable, and also having um, a big highway expansion as part of that conversation. So we're right in the middle of it right now. There's a lot of partners that are listening and coming to the table and figuring out how do we approach these goals together. And I think the, the familiarity that people have with TOD gives us an opportunity to say, yes, and in a city that has gentrification as people move east, um, how do we not displace people? How do we make sure that everyone has a chance to access transit enhancements? It's not just the wealthy that get to be there. Um, one of our light rail plans that we've adopted is gonna go straight down East Riverside. So we allocated $300 million of anti-displacement dollars in Project Connect to make sure that the city is actually buying properties and trying to make sure that we can keep people in the places they're at, in the communities where they have social support networks, and trying to really think outside the box in, in our town to make sure that all voices are being heard and that we're trying to bring the best of all of these worlds together, knowing it can't just be one or the other, it has to be everything. You know, I'll just add to that. That's why it gets me so excited. And Stevie's about to add a real thick layer on top of that. She's going to add the, the E to TOD. But it sort of like just dawned on me just in our short conversation, like, oh, yeah, I never thought about that. Because just as I described my experience 20 years ago, I mean, it's just a, it's another step in gentrification. It's another step in pushing, you know, the, the haves and the have-nots around and that kind of thing. So just thrilled to be here and, and love the topic. So thanks for all that input right there. Yeah, and I wanted to acknowledge that really this work sort of builds on the city's commitment to transit-oriented development previously, and we have several, have had some success in the Austin area with transit-oriented development, sort of the conventional model, the, the 
the web definition provides a great definition of. Um, you can see this kind of transit-oriented development um, as you walk around Austin on the ground in places like Saltillo Plaza um, and the Crestview Red Line Station on North Lamar Boulevard, as well as in the North Burnett Gateway area near our new soccer stadium. But our experience in Austin and across the country, as Councilmember Ellis re referenced, has shown that this transit-oriented development may end up displacing the low-income residents that lived there previously. Um, it may end up actually pushing transit riders further away from transit as a result of that. And it doesn't always do a great job of welcoming a diverse array um, of new residents to the new development. This means that folks that don't have access to cars get pushed further away from transit, that access to opportunity is severed, um, and that you often end up with buildings where the workers who work on the ground floor and the retail um, can't actually afford to live in the housing upstairs. And displacement of existing low-income residents can also exacerbate a lot of the negative repercussions of racial segregation and redlining that impact not only Austin, but really cities across the country. Um, with the equitable transit-oriented development work, we're trying to actively encourage transit-oriented development along the Project Connect transit system, which is a generational investment in building out rail and rapid bus um, here in Austin, and both minimizing negative impacts on the existing communities, as well as ensuring that, that the transit-oriented development that happens in concert with Project Connect provides new access to opportunities um, in the form of affordable housing, economic development, and sort of key programs and services that the folks that are going to be living in those um, new developments will need and the folks in the existing neighborhoods will need. In spring of 2023, Council accepted an equitable transit-oriented development policy plan um, for the City of Austin that serves really as the North Star of our work probably over the next several decades. Um, the plan identifies six goals for equitable TOD. Um, it analyzes station areas that are going to be along the new Project Connect system, mm -hmm. and then it also provides a policy toolkit um, for us to follow to build towards these goals. And we're currently working at the staff level um, to move towards that vision as Project Connect is constructed. Um, and we'll also just acknowledge that it is a multi-agency effort. So it is folks within the city, it is folks within our transit agency, within um, the Austin Transit Partnership, who you, I think you heard from earlier today, who are actually building out that transit line, um, as well as nonprofit partners and community partners to try to make the dream um, come to fruition. So the successful transit-oriented development is already very complicated. It requires a blend of regulations, infrastructure investments, private development, and partnerships to come together to be orchestrated carefully to make the magic happen. But equitable transit-oriented development is even more complex um, and requires some very intentional work around placekeeping at the station areas, around the use of subsidies and incentives in concert with regulations and investments to ensure that the housing units that are built along our new transit lines um, are affordable to a range of incomes and that the business mix that ultimately moves into that new development provides access to opportunity and services for those existing and new residents. Um, I think when the, when the Austin voters approved an increase to our tax rate in 2020, they really did acknowledge a desire to do more than go above and beyond sort of classic transit-oriented development um, with their allocation of $300 million of tax dollars um, towards anti-displacement efforts. Um, and to date, we've been able to use this funding to support development and preservation of affordable housing along the full Project Connect system um, and a variety of other kind of services that will support both the existing residents and the new ones that will come to the, the future equitable transit-oriented development along the system. And the equitable TOD policy plan really identifies a range of other strategies that we can take to build on the, the work that is being done by this $300 million. Um, and a big part of the, what we're working on in the spring is really um, a whole suite of amendments to our land development code. Everybody's favorite topic is land development <laughs> code, right? Um, we will be taking forward a very ambitious list of changes to our land development code to really enable and support the kind of development that we want to see along um, the Project Connect system, particularly along the Phrase 1 light rail line. Um, and part of being able to deliver those changes is both to have the city get out of the way and let private development come in and do some good for us, um, to provide incentives for that development to actually provide some of the community benefits that we're looking at for the stations, and then also to be able to show to the federal government that the city of Austin is serious about supporting our transit investment, um, because part of what we're going to be doing over the next year is submitting um, an application 
the Dawson Transit Partnership may have referenced earlier in this, these sessions today um, to try to get Federal Transit Administration funding to fund a portion of the rail line. Um, and this work is hard, it's complicated, but I think at the end of the day, it's gonna make for a, a better um, set of land uses and a better sort of quality of life for folks um, existing and new residents along the line and also help us convince the federal government that we're worthy of receiving some funding for our transit line as well. You made a lot of really good points there. One that stuck in my head though was the, uh, you know, the multimodal aspect of it is means multi-agency collaboration plus public plus regulation. Um, so it's just, like you said, to make the magic happen, it really feels like lightning striking to a certain degree. But that's why you make the plans. That's why you guys get more serious across all your touch points, right? To make it more, uh, more automatic. I got. I got. I do have a follow-up question specifically for uh, for you on uh, Project Connect because everybody's really interested on that session. If you missed it earlier today, but Taylor, let's get your sort of take on what's happening at Metro. Okay, um, I think there's a lot of commonalities, which is Great. probably not surprising. Um, but since we are the transit agency, um, we have a you know a unique perspective, and we partner with our local jurisdictions like the city of Houston and Harris County. Um, so in in December of 20 22, our board adopted a new TOD policy um, as well, and it really added an, emph an emphasis on equity, um, and just as important, it added more flexibility for us in how we uh, approach joint development projects, and those are TOD projects on Metro property. Um, it did set goals, but I think there's kind of an overarching um, three-legged stool is what one of our board members calls it um, in terms of benefits. Um, there's ridership benefits, which, you know, aside from increasing ridership, is also about the customer experience. Um, and then there's uh, revenue benefits, which could be from additional uh, fare box revenue, or it could be from um, lease revenue, uh, other revenue that we get through our development partners. Um, and then the, the final, the third leg of the stool would be community benefits. And that's really where the equity emphasis came in. Um, it kind of lay, our policy lays out a process for working with the community to define goals for our joint development projects. Um, we work with the community and the stakeholder to, to set these like overarching goals. Um, but again, we're not trying to be overly prescriptive. I think that's one of the, the unique things about the way we're approaching joint development. Um, we use goals to kind of frame the development, but we want to keep it somewhat open so that there's interest from the, de the development community um, and we're not c constraining creativity or the number of people who would be interested in, in working with us. Um, so, I mean, at a high level, that, those are, that's why we're doing it for ridership, for revenue and community benefits. Um, the way that we're approaching TOD, I've already talked about joint development, so that's one way we're approaching it. Um, we're, we also have a project or a plan very similar to Project Connect and its intent. We call it Metro Next. It's our long range plan. Um, it includes light rail expansion, bus rapid transit expansion, system enhancements. I mean, almost exactly the same kind of things um, just for Houston. And we want to prime the corridors in that project for TOD. So projects that are in the planning stages now, like our university corridor project, our inner Katy corridor project, we're doing corridor level TOD planning, um, identifying the things that we can do um, to, to support TOD and make that more TOD friendly along the, the stations. Um, a lot of that is partnerships. Um, you know, we, we don't even control the, the land use uh, or development regulation, um, but we're looking for ways to partner with our local jurisdictions on you know, sidewalks and bike improvements um, bringing community organizations, nonprofits, uh, when they're you know, considering where to locate affordable housing, we're really trying to work with them to prioritize uh, location near high quality transit. Um, so so that's, that's the second piece. Um, there's joint development, there's kind of the priming of corridors, and the, the last piece is really um, encouraging TOD with our um, partner or our sister agencies. Uh, we don't control 
land use that the city does. And even in Houston, you know, they don't have, we don't have zoning. Um, <laughs> but we, we do have some development control and the city has transit-oriented development um, regulations through the development code. So while we can't control land use, we can control the way that it looks so that it's designed in a way that's pedestrian friendly and really um, utilizes good transit access. So those regulations kick in uh, when a development is within a certain distance of a, a rail station or a bus rapid transit station. Um, and then we're also working with the development community um, to really kind of educate them on, wh on what we're trying to do and what we mean when we say TOD, um, but also to, to understand their perspective a little better so that we can understand barriers. You know, we have a lot of mixed use development um, near transit, but, and, and you know, decent and high density. But one of the challenges is that it doesn't really, it isn't designed in a way uh, intentionally to encourage walking and biking and transit usage, usage kind of tying back to your definition in the beginning. Um, so I think that's generally, you know, why we're doing it and how we're approaching it. Uh, we have the projects I talked about with the University Corridor and in Katy, those are already underway. Uh, we have another bus rapid transit corridor called the Gulfton Corridor, which is an extension of our existing bus rapid transit line. Uh, and we will soon begin uh, corridor planning for TOD there. Um, we also have a joint development project coming out soon for Tidwell Transit Center. Uh, that's one end of the line for our university corridor. Um, it's an existing transit center that will just be enhanced with the bus rapid transit service. Um, and then we're also starting the process of formally prioritizing our properties, our park and rides, our transit centers, to determine which ones uh, we really want to move forward um, in the short term versus some that might be longer term. So that's something that um, we're working on now, and ultimately we want to push out a request for expression of interest on the sites that we think um, are the highest priority. Great. Uh, we're, we're running down oh. quick on time. Uh, I had one quick curiosity question, uh, especially on like Project Connect or Next. Do you set out to define like say Connect, phase one, we're going to have two TODs in phase one. Is that defined like way early on or is it more organic sort of even after the fact, going back and studying a corridor or that kinds of stuff? Just sort of short answer. So we're, within the city of Austin, we're really thinking of equitable TOD as a mindset rather than like a specific development. So phase one light rail has multiple stations along it. It is running on an urban corridor um, that really isn't, it's not greenfield. So we're not gonna be bringing in private developers to build something at a particular station necessarily, although there may be a little bit of that. So this is really how do we retrofit as a city into a built out urban environment that has a linear transit investment running yeah. down it and stations, how do we support that all along the corridor? Um, so we're thinking way bigger than just a, a couple of TODs. This is really equitable transit oriented development along our entire corridor. Awesome. And I will add that was part of the conversation when um, my colleague Natasha Harper Madison was the lead sponsor of the ETOD uh, resolution from council and we had a discussion around yes light rail do we also do bus rapid transit that's within Project Connect do we add mm -hmm. all 15 minute routes across the city and we realized that scope was going to be a little too much to to take off in one bite and so we had to customize it based on you know what the what the grant wanted to know and how to really right size it for the riders of the transit system. Cool. 30 seconds each. If folks are interested in getting more engaged in TOD type stuff and projects, what would you tell them to do? Uh, look up the people locally that are working on it, which is probably <laughs> something that a lot of the folks in this room already know how to do. Sure. I'm sure a lot Teaming of you are engaged project, yeah. with, you know, who's on your city council, who's your county commissioners, who's authorizing your, your transportation programs. Um, I'm fortunate to get to work in a Council, Mobility Committee, Campo, CAT Metro capacity. So sometimes there's conversations happening across, you know, different parts of these conversations. And you really want to know there's someone in the middle of it to say, oh, let me connect you with Stevie. She knows everything about where every, every piece is every moment of the day. Um, and so I think that's really helpful in trying to get involved. Just Great. talk to people. And selfishly get involved in regulatory reform efforts, either in your city or elsewhere. Um, some people... You know, those are hard to get involved in, but it's really important for our council members across the state of Texas when they're making decisions about land use and land development codes along mm -hmm. transit 
to hear from a wide variety of viewpoints on what changes make sense. Makes sense. Taylor, anything down there in Houston? Uh, I mean, I would say re reach out to us directly, to me or to someone else at Metro. And also you can, if you're interested in working with us as a joint development partner, you can sign up via our procurement system and you'll get notified of upcoming and active solicitations. And, um, you know, ULI is a great organization. Not every community has one, but all the major metros do. Um, if you want to kind of get a broader involvement in TOD. Awesome. That's it. That's our time. Thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you.